Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. This is our Triangle Masterclass. Today we're going to be working on double pinwheels all from squares. So for this course we don't need any special tools or rulers. Just your regular six and a half inch ruler is perfect. A friction gel pen is great for marking our lines and then your rotary cutter. Do make sure you have a sharp blade. That's really important when we trim down our triangle units because we want to make sure that we are not pushing those corners out of alignment so that way we have nice accurate triangles where the seams are going straight into that corner. We do have a pattern to go along with this series. It's called Raspberry Sherbert and you can download it on our website shop quiltanonymous.com. If you get a kit to go with it while supplies last, you'll be able to grab that for free. Also make sure you like and subscribe here on YouTube and if you subscribe to our email list on our website, you can save 10% on your first order, including the supplies you need for this masterclass. We're starting each lesson talking a little bit about math. And essentially a quilt is a giant geometric puzzle. And if you're following a pattern, the designer has done the math for you. You just have to cut to the right size. But if you're converting instructions of doing this a regular way without starting as squares, then uh, you'll need to do this math yourself. Or if you're designing your own or resizing something, this is good to know. So what we need in order to make two double pinwheels, we need one fat quarter square that is one and a quarter inches larger than the finished size of our block, one background square that is one and a quarter inches larger than the finished size of our block, and then one fat quarter square that is one inch larger than our finished block. And this will make uh, two of these for us. And it's really, really fun. So for this one, uh, it, it's a little weird and you definitely want to make sure you keep things separate because there is not a lot of difference between the size in this case of our five inch square and our five and a quarter inch square. So you really want to make sure that you're working with the right size piece. What I like to do is just label them with post-its and keep them in a Ziploc bag to keep everything nice and separate. All right, so we don't need our five inch square. That's the smaller of the two right now. So I'm just gonna set that to the side. So I'm gonna start by marking a line going straight down my block. And I want it to go straight into those points so that I can really follow that when we are sewing these. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew down one side of the seam and then sew down the other. Typically what we do is we line up our quarter inch seam with the edge of our unit. But when we do this, we line up our quarter inch seam with the center. Now we went over this in detail in the first lesson in this masterclass on half square triangles. So if you haven't watched it, go check it out. We'll link it in the eye above and we'll also have the playlist where you can watch that as well. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to line these up right sides together with the other five and a quarter. So this is the one that is one and a quarter inches larger than our finished size. We're starting with those. It's because it's going to get sewn a couple of times so it gets a little smaller each time. All right, now I'm not gonna pin this, but you certainly can pin across the seam on the top and on the bottom. The reason why you wanna pin there is because if you pin way out here, these points can move around a whole lot on you when you are getting ready to sew. Now I've sewn literally hundreds of thousands of these, so I don't need to pin anymore, but that's where you wanna pin if you're still getting used to this method and you wanna make sure everything stays where it should. So in our first lesson on half square triangles, we covered what a scant quarter inch seam is and why you wanna use it when you are sewing any half square triangle or any triangle unit from squares. So for this one, I'm just going to say that you wanna set your sewing machine up to a scant quarter inch seam and then go ahead and start sewing. All right, so I've got the edge of my presser foot lined up with that line that I drew and I'm just gonna stitch all the way down one side. Now, if you're like me and you think you're not, you don't have to pin anymore. What I do is I get about maybe a third of the way down and then once this point is on the throat of my sewing machine I just lift it up and I make sure that my points come together at the bottom and I just hold my finger there to keep them together. Now it's really important to let your feed dogs just pull this through at a normal rate. Don't pull because that is going to make your block get stretched out and that's not good. Now when I can't hang on anymore what I do is I bring my finger to the side and I'm going to stitch all the way down. That way I can maintain that uh, accurate scan quarter inch seam all the way down. You can chain stitch these to speed everything up. For this video I'm just going to do one and so I'm going to flip everything around. Now I'm going to sew down the other side again with that scan quarter inch seam. 
just like with the half square triangles, it's really important to make sure that your unit is lying really flat at this point. If it's pretty wavy, it means that you probably stretched out the bias of that seam when you were sewing it together, either because your fabric didn't hold its shape because it wasn't as good a quality as it could have been, or maybe you pulled on it a little bit when you were sewing. So diagnose what's going on at this point, and then you can rip your seam out and do it again. The other thing we want to double check is to make sure that our seam is less than a half inch wide, but more than three eighths of an inch wide. We are in this case, I'm like right smack dab in the middle between the three eighths mark on my ruler and my half inch. That's perfect because we want to have just a little bit less than a half an inch because then we're going to have plenty of wiggle room to make sure our blocks are the right size at the end. If you've done, tried to do uh, any type of triangle unit before, you know that a lot of times it's hard to get it to be the right size when it's done. These tips will help make sure that they are for you every single time. All right, now I'm going to cut down on this line. It isn't super important that I'm exactly on the line at all times, but it is important that I don't end up with too skinny of a seam. So anything less than an eighth of an inch is too skinny and that can pop open just with regular use. Or if you get it long armed and put it on a frame, it can pop open then. All right, now we have two half square triangles. We're going to press them open and join them to our smaller square, the one that's one inch larger than our finished size. And then we're going to be able to create those mirror image double pinwheels. So whenever I am working with triangles and really almost all seams that I sew together, I press my seams open. It makes for really flat joins and it really allows those points to really shine. And a lot of folks uh, like to say, well, you can stitch in the ditch if you do that. Well, there is no ditch uh, when you press your seam open. So what you're going to do is you're going to stitch right next to it. And it's super strong, super great. A lot of professional quilters like myself do it this way because we do it all the time and we know that the results are fantastic and super strong. There's about 80 quilts behind me that have all been sewn and quilted with that modified stitch in the ditch method and they are holding up great. So no worries about it. Quilt police, you can you can rest easy. It's okay. You can, you can have a great long lasting quilt when you press your seams open and it's gonna be even better because it's gonna be the right size. Because when you flip a seam to one side, so let's say we had flipped this to the dark side, you're going to lose just the teeniest bit of fabric here. And then sometimes it doesn't end up being the right size because all fabrics are a little bit different thicknesses. So if you're working with like say a cotton and steel that is a more substantive substrate that you're working with, you might be losing quite a bit when you press that open or a flannel for sure, or press it to the side rather than open. But here, everything stays the same side because it just gets flipped right down the center. All right, when you do this, you wanna make sure that you have a nice straight line here. If you see a wiggle anywhere, it means there is a pleat on the other side and you're not gonna be able to trim it correctly when we get down to the end. Now, where this differs from our half square triangles is we do not want to trim these blocks at this point. We're gonna to wait to trim until we are completely done with everything and we just need to let these be for right now. So don't get out your rotary cutter, don't trim anything. We're just gonna sew next and then we'll trim at the very end. All right, so now with the wrong side up of the half square triangles that we just made, we're going to line up our ruler from corner to corner on the wrong side and we're going to just draw a line out and I'm going to do it super dark so you guys can see it at home but just a light line is perfectly fine for you at home. Again make sure that you're going right into that corner so that way we have everything ready to go. Now I find that rather than going straight up and down it's a lot easier if you just work from the center out. This goes for when you haven't pieced it as well but especially when you piece it it's best to just kind of treat them as two separate entities. All right so this is a really good example. I have accidentally gone to the side of my point instead of right on. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to redraw my line to make sure that I'm going straight in to that point. That way it's gonna be absolutely perfect and my points are gonna be exactly where they should be when we're all done. All right, now we are going to take our five inch squares and we're gonna lay these right sides together. Now it's important to note because we had a little bit of extra wiggle room here on this block, um, this is actually about an eighth of an inch smaller, our uh, half square triangle, than our block here. That's 
It's supposed to be that way, it's okay. Do not panic if they're not the same size. What you do wanna make sure that you're doing is making sure that your points are nice and lined up, so that way you've got your points going straight out to the edges. I like to have mine nice and centered because I've, then I've got wiggle room all around. And again, if you wanna pin, you're gonna pin across the top seam and across the bottom seam. So now we're gonna sew our scant corner and seam down both sides of this block, so that way we can create our double pin wheel. You can see how this is gonna work. We're gonna end up with mirror image blocks, one here and one here. All right, so just like before, we wanna make sure that our blocks are lying nice and flat to make sure we haven't stretched out that bias seam. You also wanna give it a good check, make sure that your seam allowance looks good. In this case, we're a little bit less than half an inch, which is perfect, but more than three eighths. That you don't have to do this forever and always, but when you're first getting started, definitely check a few, like maybe a few from the top of your stack, a few from the middle, a few from the end. If you are consistent through all of them and they are where they should be, then you're probably good to go. If you are consistently off, then your triangles are not gonna turn out the right size. You're gonna wanna do that again. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and give it a trim. Again, it doesn't have to be right on the line, but it should be kind of close to it so that way you don't have too skinny of a seam that could pop open with wear or even when it's being quilted. All right, so now we have four of these. We're gonna have to press them, of course, but we can open them up now and give you a take. So you can see how it's a mirror image of it. So when I put the block like this, the, uh, smaller fabric triangle is in a different spot. And don't worry, we're gonna use that, both of these options in the border of our quilt. But uh, if you are doing this for just a regular old design, half of your blocks are gonna be usable, the other half are gonna be bonus for another project that you do at some point down the line. So I'm gonna press these open and then we're gonna get them trimmed and sorted. So just like before, we're gonna give this a press and make sure all our seams are nice and open. You do wanna make sure you're lifting and pressing when we get to this seam, because we don't want to accidentally press it going the other way. That would not be very fun. All right, so I always like to press from both sides. First press open, and then get it good from the other side. And this is just laying super, super flat. It looks fabulous. I'm gonna do all the others, then we're ready to trim. All right, so now it's time to trim these down to size. Now remember, we didn't trim when we sewed our half square triangles together. We're gonna do it all at once here, so that way we've got the maximum amount to make sure we have blocks that end up the correct size when we're all done. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line that 45 degree line up with that seam allowance. Now, one other thing I'm gonna make sure I'm doing, and it, it kind of takes a little bit of getting used to because you can't just move your ruler over to make it work. You've gotta move it along the diagonal to keep that 45 degree line. But I wanna get this four and a half inch mark so that it is exactly even where this seam comes out because we want it to be right in the corner of where we're gonna be. All right, so I've got 45 degree. I've got four and a half coming out right where this point is. And I just have a teeny little bit to trim off. It's like hardly anything, maybe just a few threads and some dog ears. Well, look at that. That is looking good. We've got our point going straight out to the edge and we can tell that we're set up really well to get this as well. All right, so I'm gonna give it that 180 degree flip. So that way our cut edge is on the left and the bottom. Again, if you are uh, left-handed, then your cut edge is gonna be on the other side. All right, so now we're gonna get it lined up again. Now, just like before, we are getting that 45 degree line up first because we want all of our triangle points going right out to the edge of our squares. And I'm lining up my cut edges here and our four and a half should be meeting right where these are coming together. And again, with a super sharp rotary blade, because if you have a dull one, it's going to push this fabric out of the way and then your points aren't gonna go right where they need to be anymore and that's gonna be a problem for you. You can go ahead and give that a trim. 
All right, that is looking fantastic. We've got all of our points going right out to the corners, which is exactly where we want it. It's gonna make it really easy to get all of our triangle points to line up when we assemble this block, or in this case, a border. I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the other one as well so you can see what it looks like when we have that mirror image and they're all trimmed very nicely. And then I'm gonna show you how I organize them so that way I am set up nicely for when it's time to sew this border together. All right, so there's one final thing I do, and typically I do this as I'm trimming the blocks down, is I'm going to organize these based on where the triangles are that are fat quarters. So we have, I'm putting the large triangle in the same bottom right corner here. And then that's gonna vary where the small triangle is, because remember these are mirror image blocks. So that's just how it works. When you sew things from squares, they're gonna always end up being mirror image. So if we put them this way, you can see it a little better that it's that mirror image block. Now, again, in our pattern that we created to go with this masterclass, we're gonna use them all. But if you are doing this for something else, half of them are gonna be a bonus for another project, or maybe you can make a coordinating throw pillow or something. All right, so now I'm just going to go through and line these guys up. So that way I have them all together so that when we are ready to sew these together, I can easily pick from each step because they're going to be right next to each other as we sew them together for the border. I hope you are enjoying our triangle masterclass. Again, this one was all about our double pin wheels and we're making everything from squares. Next up, we're going to be doing hourglass units. So those are really fun too. We're gonna to make them all from squares. And again, the pattern for this is called Raspberry Sherbert. You can of course just use this in order to use them in whatever pattern it is that calls for them. But if you wanna follow along with us. We're doing a little quilt along as we release these videos and you can get that by doing the pattern for Raspberry Sherbert and if you get the kit while supplies last then we'll give you the pattern for free. All right make sure you like and subscribe here on YouTube as well as over on our website so you can get 10% off your first purchase from us and get all the supplies you need. We always have some fat quarter bundles around and we always try to keep in those rulers in stock as well a six and a half inch ruler and really that's all you need that and, and your your friction gel pen very very easy to master has square triangles and, and all the triangles you do not need a lot of fancy tools or rulers that'll do just fine all right well thanks so much and until next time happy quilting mm -hmm.